So what is differentiation in the mathematics classroom? Differentiated instruction is a teacher's response to learners' needs guided by the following principles. Accessible tasks that allow all students an entry point and also allow students to reach high levels of mathematical thinking. It is flexible groupings, allowing students to move in and out of groups of learners to best meet their needs. It is ongoing assessment and monitoring of student learning by the educator. And most importantly, it's building a community of learners that respects that all students learn differently and that all voices are valued. So differentiation is not something that's done on its own, but planned within instruction. As an educator, the goal of differentiation is to create a mathematics classroom that better suits all of their learners. In the classroom, differentiation happens when we see students working on tasks using multiple methods to solve the problem. Differentiated tasks require students to use what they already know, already feel confident about, and apply that learning to solve new problems and new tasks. Teachers can use open-ended tasks and parallel tasks to support differentiation. When we provide open questions, we are providing the opportunity for students to use their own background knowledge and experiences to support their solutions. Therefore, we're not only seeking one type of answer, but multiple solutions and different ways of looking at problems, uh, which enrich and broaden everyone. Open-ended questions provide access for all students to engage in and work with a concept. You might have heard them referred to as low floor, high ceiling tasks, or a variation of that phrase. So it doesn't mean creating multiple questions for students, but allowing one question to support multiple ways of looking at a problem. Instead of asking how many sides are in a pentagon, we could ask, draw two pentagons, or look at these two pentagons. What do you notice is the same about them? What's different? Or what do squares and rectangles have in common? How are they different from triangles and pentagons? Parallel tasks allow students to have choice in what questions they are ready for. Educators need to think about the background knowledge of their students and what strategies the students are using in order to provide questions that students are ready for and are just the right type of challenge for all students. A great parallel task allows all students to learn about a mathematical concept together and allows us to see different approaches to the problem. So students can work on a task that is the right amount of challenge for them, but also see and learn from others in the room and, having, and have their thinking pushed further. An example might be, I threw a Frisbee twice, and the total distance was 63 meters. The first throw was 48 meters. How long was the second throw? Or, I kicked a soccer ball twice, and the total distance was 173 meters. The first kick traveled 86 meters. How far was my second kick? And you can see that both problems allow students to work with a problem that is structured so that the start and the end is known, but the change is unknown. Both problems can be solved in a variety of ways. Both problems work with numbers that require some flexibility of thinking to solve. But the second problem has numbers that are more challenging to work with. Marion Small provides a great deal of information about open and parallel tasks if you wanna learn more about uh, using them to create uh, differentiation in your class. And in order to be able to differentiate effectively, educators need to be constantly monitoring and gathering information and using that information to inform their instruction. And this is often called a responsive instruction cycle. So educators start a unit or a cycle of instruction by gathering diagnostic information about their students' prior knowledge. And then they use this information to plan lessons, which allow opportunities for growth and development 
in those mathematical concepts. As students work on problem solving tasks, the educator is observing, asking questions, listening to student talk. They select student work and sequence it for the consolidation portion of the lesson, connecting the work to the learning goals and helping students make and see those connections. They may choose to give an exit ticket so that students can demonstrate their learning independently. These observations, conversations, and, a product, and products allow the educator to make informed decisions about instructional next steps. Thinking about which students need further support in a concept, which students need a challenge, which students need time to practice and consolidate. Differentiation creates opportunities for students to feel confident and shine in mathematics. As educators, when we create opportunities to show their thinking and are open to many possible methods and solutions, then we have created a learning environment that is accepting and safe and effective for all students.